Welcome to the research sector of the Federal Bureau of Control. I'm Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Somebody thought this video would make for great internal communications. I'm looking at you, Mr. Tomasi. So, this is where the magic happens. Anyway, I, I've been here for 24 years now. I've always been here. And, and through those years, we've made astonishing discoveries, authored studies of grave importance, and in all this work, there is one thing we know, and that's how little we truly know. Rest assured, we're committed to keep pushing the known laws and borders of reality, and to make the Bureau proud. So, welcome. Assuming you have the necessary clearance, and, and do follow the safety protocols. Read the manual, otherwise bad things will happen. There is a curious correlation with the yet unknowable forces intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects, a gun, a television, a supposedly haunted house. So clearly humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life popular culture, urban legends, but we are observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there's something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? A byproduct, a reflection, a projection? We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions or die trying. <laughs> The astral plane. Similar to an iceberg, what you see is not what you always get. Regardless, this place is vitally important to the Bureau. Most information on the astral plane is, is classified, but we can talk in broad strokes, keeping in mind that these are staggeringly complex systems, and simplification does them no justice. Now, the white non-space, the ever-present inverted black pyramid, the board, all linked, intrinsically tied to the oldest house, tied to the director, the process of choosing a director, tied to all objects of power in terms of who controls them. Yes. <laughs> objects of power can cause or be results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. A side note, remember to cover their connection to the astral plane as well. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP, a very powerful one. Ingrained in the Bureau's DNA, a key component in our prime candidate program. Come out of that Russian roulette a winner and you, <laughs> you're it. Lose and you're well fired. Thank you. I'm Dr. Darling, head of research, Federal Bureau of Control. Dr. Darling calling. In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring and picked it up, going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered, and the handful of witnesses required extensive memory repression therapy. 
It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is, under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well, our very own Ouija board. Only the director can answer it safely, and what he hears is kept classified. <laughs> Just look at it. Eight inches wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. OOP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. The exact process of how an altered item is born eludes us. We find them in the aftermath of altered world events. They take the form of everyday objects, ever-present in our lives, constantly evoked in the thoughts of millions of people, now infused with unpredictable energies. They're altered. The superstitious would call them cursed. Now, are altered items sentient? Not quite. They're often fixated, programmed almost to cause certain events to happen over and over again. While generally less potent than objects of power, they are not able to be controlled. Left unchecked, they, they can be highly dangerous. To study altered items, we contain them in Panopticon. in the oldest house are under the right conditions when the frequencies match other dimensions leak in we call these areas thresholds the quarry is one of the more stable thresholds in the maintenance sector that's that's where black rock comes from extra dimensional matter it has the unique property of blocking out a lot of frequencies a, a good thing it keeps things stable contained think of it as Paranatural lead. Our research involves many dangerous things we absolutely need to keep in check. That's what the Black Rock Line fire breaks are about. The Panoptican container uh, cells. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but I need the code for the quarry elevator. Oh, uh, Emily, the codes Black Rock 665, neighbor of the beast. Get it? <laughs> We can do that again. During an AWE investigation, our agents discovered a light switch cord in a Butte bungalow closet. They pulled the cord and were instantly transported to the Ocean View Motel and Casino. Dream like haze. Whoa. Inside, they found a door marked with an inverted black pyramid. And just like that, it, it led back to the oldest house, some 2,000 miles from Montana. N now we're finding the cord in increasing numbers throughout the Bureau. Somehow the two places, they, they became in tune to each other. The, the actual physical location of the ocean view is, is, is a mystery. Stepping beyond his walls, 
has so far proven impossible. A place of power, like the oldest house. <laughs> August 4th, 1964, we discovered the oldest house while investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. The agents found their way up into the building. Once we became aware of it, it was there. For the rest of the population, it was hiding in plain sight, a, a slippery blind spot, seemingly discouraging observation. It's uh, a place of power. An ongoing AWE of its own, seemingly adhering to its physical outer constraints and yet constantly breaking the known boundaries of reality. It's, it's unstable, shifting. Note, for more details on control points and the research and process to stabilize and secure the core sectors, refer to a separate presentation. After extensive research and investigation, the Bureau made the building its headquarters on November 13th, 1968. The Federal Bureau of Control was never out in the open. This, this was always an obfuscated, classified top secret operation. So imagine our surprise when the building's observation resistant aspects began in some unquantifiable way to affect the Bureau as a whole. An early hypothesis was that the mindscape of the astral plane is subjective. But that was fast proven wrong. It's an actual place, not a construct of the mind, even though it is with our minds that we enter and experience it. But then one could argue that that's the case with all reality. We've been able to record footage of the astral plane by monitoring the brain activity of those experiencing it. That is the only concrete material that has come out of the astral plane expeditions. Uh, apart from one shocking exception. In the astral plane footage, we're always in the vicinity of the pyramid. We've concluded that this, not the entire plane, is what the board controls. We have glimpsed movement, native species, always in the distance, and yet contact was made. We don't have footage of this, a technical malfunction, but when one of our astronauts returned, a brain cloud, an astral fugue, had hitchhiked a ride in his head. It ruptured out, killing the subject in question. It's a relentless predator, pursuing thoughts, minds, lethal to those the entity feeds on. Proper containment protocols are to be observed when dealing with it. The projected image from each slide is a, a physical portal into another dimension. Only one slide remains. And Dylan's sister burned the rest in ordinary before we could intercept. The text on it, color slide film, this side towards screen, and, and the number 36. The topography of slidescape 36 bears deep wave marks. On the slide and in the distance, there's a formation of five pillars, like crude, outstretched, fingers. There were casualties on our first expedition. Communication is an issue. There is no sound there, as if you've gone deaf. And radios don't work. Correction, uh, resonance from an unknown source in part within the range of audible frequency. It acts in unpredictable ways, causing feedback loops that can tear you apart. Trench insists he heard something else. It made his ears bleed. Our equipment found no evidence of anything beyond the primary resonance. Trench's medical tests show nothing amiss. Yes. 
Expedition 3. We located the source of the resonance in Slidescape 36. It is an entity, a living organism of a considerable mass. I I've named it Hedron based on its physical shape, the part that we can perceive. I honestly think there's the resonance it emits, the frequencies. We've, we've never seen anything like it. We, we, we built a container for it, and we brought it in. This changes everything. It's beyond our understanding. We have brought so many questions with us through that hole in the wall. I will dedicate... <laughs> I'm never going home. I've been fielding questions recently regarding HRAs. What are they for? Do you always need to wear them? And what's the deal with the Hedron resonance anyway? I. Fuck. Despite what you may have heard, HRAs are not monitoring devices. We're not tracking your movements or listening to your conversations while you're wearing them. We do that regardless whether or not you're wearing an HRA. Think of them as a, as a uh, life preserver. Only instead of water, the, the thing HRAs protect you from is um, classified. One day that classified, not water, might pour in and you'll be glad you got, a, got an HRA keeping you afloat. And if you don't have an HRA, don't worry. It'll be uh, quick and painless. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. We're making more. Ordinary. So much coming together in this one case. A new object of power, something we have not seen before. I mean, coming from me, that's, that's saying something. And the boy. Dylan Faden, prime candidate six, and the sister as well, I mean, once we catch up with her, but the, the boy, that's so much potential. We're talking Northmore level readings here, and, and I don't want to invoke his name, but it's completely different circumstances here. It's remarkable. There was an incident. Yes. We lost a valuable member of our team, yes. Excessive force. Dylan has so much. But he's, he, he's just a kid. I, I'll take the blame. He, he, he needs some slack. I mean, boys will be boys. He's exceptional and under a lot of stress. Roberts got killed. It's an unfortunate accident, that's all. Marshall needs to realize this. We will make this work. We'll make this work. Dylan's a lost cause. 
I know I struggled to see this, but we've contained him now. I wish I had sided with Marshall. Back when it's just one person, so many dead. I thought his youth was an asset. I'd... Just too much too soon. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I, I don't know when. Resonance is the key. Vibration, frequencies, waveforms, fields we, we didn't know were there. <laughs> it's physics. These fields in complex interaction, altering reality that comes to contact with them. Hedron is communicating with me. It's trying to warn me of something imminent. I've been using every known method to analyze the data. Exposing myself to it. I'm seeing things and overcome by compulsion. It's, it's not just data, it's, it's protection. It's benign. We are about to be exposed to a different kind of resonance. Hostile, viral, Invasive resonance. I think that's that's what the Hedron resonance amplifiers are for. Taking the protection Hedron can provide us and keeping us from being wiped out. there inside locked in ready to be blown away ready for the journey to be blown flying into the model ready to see to understand I'm Dr. Casper Darling, and this, this is my final message. It's 
not the end. But after this, I won't. I won't. I exposed myself to Hedrin Resonus fully. It, it is. It's changing me. I've. I've seen. so much. Slidescape 36 was where Hedrick stopped the spread of another. It's, oh, it's terrifying. It really is. It's another source of resonance. Trench was exposed to this other. It will now spread. I've done everything I can to stop the Hedron Resonance amplifiers. I, I don't know if it'll make a difference. I, I, I won't be here when it happens. I, I should have told him any more. I'm being said one more lesson. Something wonderful. <laughs>